So this afternoon we have Jason Hibbets uh, talking about open data and civic tech.
The first one is Surfline. A bunch of folks from California um, made this. They, uh, they put their kind of proprietary spin on a bunch of open data and they charge uh, subscription fees for it. Uh, they also have a, a vast network of live cameras where you can check the surf. Anyway, any other surfers in the room? Or am I just, all right. I figured I'm in California, there's gotta be a few. Uh, notice I strategically used Southern California surf locations. Uh, this is uh, Swell Info. You can see they're taking a little bit different approach. Um, they're giving you a nice swell chart and color coordinating it with the winds uh, based on how, uh, that would, how the winds would impact the surf conditions. And they're actually giving you a little bit longer outlook than uh, compared to swell.com. Uh, and then there's this, uh, one out of the UK called Magic Seaweed. Interesting name. Um, but they also have kind of a different way to present it. And I also threw in a North Carolina uh, one here so that you know that we actually do have some, some decent surf out there. The takeaway from doing this research and writing this article was that it's a great example of how the same data set can be, um, can be interpreted, can be visualized, and can be displayed in a bunch of different ways. You can see that all three of these examples look completely different, but are all based on the same information. So my personal passion for the last eight years or so has been to improve the citizen experience uh, through civic tech and open data. Um, I found my superpower, which happened to be community organizing, and so that's why I really got involved with establishing our local civic tech group. Um, uh, basically, you know, I believe that the only ones who can change government are us, and I would imagine that the reason why many of you are, are, many of you are here in this room is because we see flaws in the system that we would like to correct somehow um, within our superpowers, or maybe we discover our superpowers. So I joined uh, Code for America, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning of what they are. Uh, they have over 70 brigades uh, throughout the United States. Um, you're local, if you're local here to the Los Angeles area, there's an amazing uh, organization called Hack for LA that you can get involved with. So as I was doing research for this presentation, I found a bunch of different sources throughout the, uh, over the last 10 or so years. I found an article um, by a company called Socrata um, back in 2015 called The Economic Impact of Open Data. And um, the author, Tim Cashman, basically says, uh, the total economic value for GPS-based products and services is estimated to be over $90 billion annually. So GPS is something that we have in the palm of our hand as we look for restaurants and get driving instructions. And then the NOAA data, that, uh, NOAA weather data I mentioned earlier, is having, uh, an, according to 2015 numbers, an annual impact of about $15 billion. So then I wanted to see, like, well, how, what kind of companies and startups are using open data? And I went over to uh, the Open Data Institute, and they have uh, kind of a Rolodex of about 46 or so startups that are using open data. We've got folks like CropBase. Uh, they're helping farmers make smart choices around crop production. Uh, we've got FloodSensed. They're um, sending out flood alerts from their IoT uh, flood sensing devices. Uh, open Bank Project is basically working on an open source banking platform. Uh, this Piccolo is an open utilities company working on building out a smarter energy grid. Uh, and then I uh, skipped over Mastodon C. Mastodon C is using data science uh, to transform uh, public services such as education, um, hospitals, and businesses. Then if you go over to, um, oh, who's this organization? Um, oh, feedback. The, uh, this is a, a list for, uh, called the Open Data 500 um, from GovLab. And I just picked a couple that you might know and a few that you might not know. Uh, but Granicus is a, a really cool organization there, um, really involved in citizen engagement, um, legislation of effic efficiency and government transparency. And so they've got a bunch of different applications um, that can easily roll out to different municipalities. I'm sure most of you have heard of Mapbox, but they're an open source platform for designing and publishing maps and geographical data. Um, SAS is actually a company local to where I'm from in North Carolina, uh, they're the next town over. They're doing advanced analytics and data management, um, but most of the stuff they're doing is proprietary, but they are consuming open data. I wish they would produce more open data, so we'll, we'll see what we can do there. Uh, C Click Fix is uh, hopefully, um, do they have C Click Fix here? Do you know? No? Well, you don't have C Click Fix here in LA, but if you did, um, it's basically an open 311 service, and you can report non emergency issues to your town, uh, such as potholes and graffiti. Uh, and back in Raleigh, that basically on the back end opens up a service ticket, and then um, hopefully those problems get fixed. Um, I used Yelp to find lunch today, uh, pretty cool. 
Um, my county government actually worked with Yelp to develop an API to bring in health data scores to, their, um, to the app because who in their right mind is gonna go look up a health data score on the public open data portal uh, when they're using Yelp to find the places they wanna go. So if you come to, a, is, that, is that live here too, do you know? Yeah? So if you go to Yelp, you can see public um, inspection scores for the health department, which is kinda cool. Um, this is, uh, who is this organization? Uh, this is from the, um, the Center of Open Data Enterprise. And they, according to their data, they have found that there's over 90 countries using open data and uh, over 1,600 organizations. Um, so this map uh, that they've built out includes organizations that include companies, nonprofits, uh, academic institutions, and developer groups, um, and how they're using open data to um, conduct research, improve uh, strategy, whatever. Uh, let's see, the uh, folks over at Open Data Soft um, have a lot of great material on their website. Um, I'm not advocating for one over the other, by the way, uh, but they have found that there's over 2,600 open data portals out there. Uh, I think this was, these are numbers from last year. So that's a lot of open data portals. I've got some friends over at a place called City Life. Um, uh, they have a platform that empowers cities to rapidly deploy um, uh, at affordable for government, affordable maps, uh, uh, mobile apps that engage citizens through a variety of tools. Um, you can just kind of see a couple of the, the listings here. Not only are they making open data easier for governments to consume and the citizens that they serve, but they're already using things like artificial intelligence. Um, they're starting to integrate blockchain into uh, their platform, and they're also working on voice technologies like Alexa so that you can say, hey, Alexa, when is my trash day? And you would get a response based on your location um, or based on how they know that what trash day you are. They are at uh, appcitylife.com. So open data has this huge ripple effect. When uh, government departments open up their data, not only does it hold them accountable uh, for kind of maybe their actions or what their purpose is, but it also allows other departments to consume and use that open data. Uh, this can have a really high impact on increased efficiency uh, and it can also encourage other departments who maybe don't have open data to get on the bandwagon and get more open data out there. So a couple of examples of this would be parking deck utilization can help uh, police departments know which parking decks they should monitor more based on capacity and based on how full they are. Or maybe school enrollment would like to use open data to help, um, help libraries pick more relevant books based on en enrollment data. McKinsey, uh, one of our favorite consulting firms, uh, estimated that the economic value of open data in the United States is worth more than $3 trillion annually. Uh, in the same article um, on this report, they also estimated that open data could increase the value of the G20 countries by $13 trillion over the next five years. Those are some really big numbers. Went over to data.gov, and they've got some interesting statistics over there. The value of federal open data in the United States is estimated in the hundreds of billions of dollars, no surprise based on the previous numbers. Uh, the U.S. Department of Commerce uh, calculates that internet publishing, consulting, and market research firms um, use data to gen generate more than $200 billion in revenues each year. Again, these are really big numbers. Um, and then, as I, since we talked about GPS and weather data earlier, um, combine that with census data and health data, um, you know, the, the numbers are just growing. It's really amazing to see how, what an impact open data is having. So Europe is a really big fan of open data as well. Um, they actually might be a little bit more ahead of the curve than some of us over here in the U.S. Um, but they, uh, let's see, this is the European Open Data Portal, and they have some estimates that, um, that open data has a 325 billion uh, euro, uh, billion euro market size. They think that by 2020, that they'll have over 100,000 jobs that will be related to the open data field. They think that the public administration, the EU 28 countries, can save uh, more than 1.7 billion euros. They think that 10,000 lives can be saved uh, by having quicker response times uh, due to open data, and that we can save approximately 2,500 hours looking for a parking spot. Who's excited about that? Um, one of the projects that my brigade got involved with uh, last year 
was uh, hurricane response uh, information. And so this is an example of crowdsourced information. And so what we did is, through the help of Code for America, set up uh, a website that could help people find hurricane shelters. And uh, this is like impacting people because they have to evacuate their home and they've got, they need a place to stay if they don't have friends and family nearby. And uh, what was really interesting about this, uh, we had a, uh, getting the technology set up was really easy. Getting the real-time data was really hard. Um, the uh, FEMA and the Red Cross were, I think, updating things every 12 or so hours. And so we had situations where people were going to shelters that were being closed um, because, the, because they were in the path of the hurricane. And so we had volunteers from Code for America from, I think, uh, over 14 brigades that were literally calling shelters to get real-time data, and they were entering that data on the back end. So we were getting information faster than FEMA and the Red Cross, um, which is great in the moment, but not great for the long-term sustainability of what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, and so that was really cool. This is uh, FlorenceResponse.org. Um, I think the, the better part of not only that we're helping in real time at this point and volunteering our time to do this, is that this effort actually led to conversations with both of those organizations. Uh, we found that there's really no standard, there's no standardized way to capture some of this information, so maybe we can create a standard for that, uh, and maybe we can actually, how can we leverage volunteers in times like that so that they can actually use more official systems than this. So I think the simple act of um, governments opening data, um, excuse me, the simple act of a government agency, nonprofit, corporations, and any other organization delivering open data is definitely adding to the total economic impact um, in our economy. But opening the data isn't, um, may not just be valuable on its own, right? The, the latest trends here are to share relevant data that's important to people, right? We had a discussion in the previous session around, um, do you have APIs for your open data portal? Well, maybe your consumers of, of that portal don't need APIs, and maybe just having the data available is just enough. A couple of examples I was thinking through is um, how property value and traffic data is impacting the real estate sector, or how local governments or advertisers are using census data to make more effective decisions in the projects they're working on. Wow, I went through this really fast. I'm sorry. We'll have plenty of time for questions. Uh, in conclusion, uh, <laughs> open data is contributing billions of dollars to our, uh, to our economy, right? having a huge impact. So we're not only seeing startups use open data and consume it to, to build their businesses, but we're seeing larger organizations and businesses use open data, we're seeing academics use open data for research. Um, and many, many other organizations depend on open data for their livelihood. Um, governments are not only producing open data for transparency, but it's, uh, they're increasing citizen engagement uh, and they're increasing some of the efficiencies that they're seeing through their work. And finally, you know, open data is impacting our everyday life, right? Whether it's saving someone's life, getting them to a shelter that's not closed, or saving them time finding a parking space. I think the possibilities are endless, right? This, what we're seeing is the power of open data. And I would just encourage you to join me in being an advocate, uh, encourage you to maybe find your local brigade and get involved somehow, um, and basically uh, using open data for good. So that went a lot faster than I thought, but uh, plenty of time for questions. Uh, and that's uh, my slides are available on GitHub uh, if you want to go through. I've got all the speaker notes on there with all the references and sources. So uh, we're going to, uh, since we're uh, recording, um, Nina has the microphone, and I think we've got a question over here. So we can raise your hand. Excuse me, I wasn't at your first presentation, uh, but I am interested in this. And what I'm wondering about is, uh, for the person that is very new to, uh, to this source of information, um, where uh, or how would you define the, the basic fundamentals of open data? What organizations are, are doing the collection? Uh, is there any type of uh, financial reward for some of these are, are people like, well, you mentioned the uh, surf uh, site, and I, I deal with a couple of uh, wind sites, and I know that they're always trying to put a price tag on stuff like this, but I think what you're talking about actually comes before that, and that's what I'm interested in, in finding uh, the, the locations for. Sh should I go to the Code for America site and then start entering search words, or what? Yeah, so um, that's a lot 
of question, uh, but I'll summarize it as if I needed to start with open data, where do I go? Um, and so I would start, it really the answer is it depends on what you're ultimately looking for, right? So we have open data at various levels in our government, right? So we have um, local municipalities. Uh, the previous talk was from Beverly Hills. They, are, they have a beta portal that they just launched. Um, and so they've got 18, 20 data sets that are out there. Um, so start local, right? Then there's sometimes county, uh, county level open data portals. There's sometimes state level open data portals. And then data.gov is uh, the federal government, and that's got over, I think, 280,000 different data sets. And so that's why I mentioned earlier, sometimes there's an overwhelming number of data sets that you don't know where to start. Uh, I would say in my experience, a lot of the open data program managers or a lot of people in charge of the open data portals really want you to use their data. So I would encourage you to reach out to them to see you know, if you have a specific question on where to get started. If you're looking for a particular data set that doesn't exist, you can request for that information uh, be posted. Uh, so start local and then go your way up or uh, make some new friends in this room and they can maybe help you get started. Any other questions over here? So uh, it was alluded to by the previous questioner, but something you said in your slides is Yelp is using open data as part of their platform. So they are monetizing open data that, go that government sources are producing. What are your feelings on perhaps Yelp paying for that data since you're using it for commercial applications as opposed to a school or you know, something that is also a government-run organization using that data to further the public good? Right? They're, they're privatizing public data and using that as their platform seems a little aggressive. Yeah, I mean, so you're kind of asking about the monetization piece of it, right? Well, I think the economic benefits that we're seeing, like if we started charging for open data, um, it could have an Im impact down the line, right? And so there's, I think there's been some discussion a couple years ago around should NOAA charge for data for the, for the weather data? And so I just think that those costs would be passed on to consumers and so, or make it, make the entry to markets like that harder, right? And so to go back to the surf example, yes, they're monetizing that data. They're taking data that's freely available and they're building a platform around it and they're running ads, they're selling swag, they're selling t-shirts, whatever. And they're, that's, they're, they're building their business based off data that's freely and openly available. That in a sense, like as we were talked earlier, that we paid for in the first place, right? And so should all, uh, should all research and data that's publicly paid be then publicly available. That's a great conversation for us to have. And I think it's kind of on a case-by-case -case basis, right? Um, at a high level, I think if we're paying our taxes and it's going to create software or to create open data, we should have access to that. Uh, obviously following the rules of open data, so meaning no personally identifiable information can get out there. Does that help? Let's get in the back. Nina's getting some extra. I was gonna start my talk by saying we went out to lunch and had some dim sum, so if I start falling asleep and getting the food coma, but we're, Nina's getting her exercise after lunch. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just wanna know what the Freedom of Information Act is and if we can use it to gain access to more data. I mean, how, how does it work? Sure, uh, in my novice opinion, I'm not an expert on this, but it is, uh, and anyone can correct me if I misspeak, it's our ability to go to our government and request information. Um, there's, I think, different levels of what you can do. But for example, if there was uh, a data set that you were interested in, you can then go to that, whatever department has that, that information and request that information be uh, put out to the public. Did I get, Vicki, I'm looking at you. Did I get that? Yeah, so So the FOIA one, I'm gonna to try to repeat some of that for that. So FOIA one is the federal level one. Uh, California has a specific one for public uh, information. Uh, and MUDROCK, is that what you said? MUCK ROCK. 
tr is tracking a lot of the, the uh, information requests. Hi. Oh, we have a, hold on, we have a question. Yeah, so uh, what do you think can be done to increase financial incentives for organizations of various kinds to produce really high quality open data sets, which can be really expensive? That's a great question. I don't know if I have a good response for that. Um, as far as motivation is concerned, I mean, money is always a great motivator. Uh, but then, you know, we're seeing a great trend and kind of like B Corp type stuff of you know, just building companies for good. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd have to think about that one. So, sorry, I don't have a good answer off the cuff. And you wanted to, you had a question about formatting? Uh, what, what, data? what kind of format can we expect uh, to find this data appearing in? Yeah, so uh, open data is going to come in, it can come in a variety of formats. Um, it can come in a uh, format as a CSV file. Um, they can put integrate it with map data. Uh, I am actually not an expert on the different formats, so those are, those, I'm just kind of giving a very high level of what that is. Um, I like to think about it as spreadsheets. So think about open data can, kind of looking like a spreadsheet, um, but can be consumed maybe different ways, if, that, if that's helpful. Uh, with your experience with uh, various data sets, can you comment on the variety of currency and accuracy of the data that you're getting? Is it maintained uh, frequently, or do things get out of date and things get stale? Great question. Um, it's really going to depend on the data that you're looking for. So it's from the government. Of course it's accurate, right? Um, just kidding. <laughs> uh, I think um, most organizations that are producing open data want it, or want it to be as accurate as possible. Um, you'll have some data that is updated daily, hourly, just depending on what type of data it is. Um, you have some data that is kind of a, maybe a one-time, here this is available for you to use. Uh, it's really the full spectrum. You'll see just a variety of, um, it, it really depends on how their program is organized uh, and how often they want to provide the updated data. And actually, a lot of times it comes down to how, how much resources do they have available to keep that data updated. Uh, I think that's our biggest challenge is we've got some open data program, uh, open data programs just have five, six, seven people on their staff. Um, others maybe have that one champion that's like, I got I really got to get this out there because I just believe that this is the right thing to do and I want to help, you know, help people get open data that they're, that's providing. Um, so it's really the full spectrum. Um, and it's, uh, it is, that is, that's the answer, right? It's the full spectrum. All right, well, um, if I had a half an hour slot, we'd be right on time. Uh, but we'll give you guys a little bit of coffee break or whatever. Uh, thanks for coming, appreciate it. I'll hang out, uh, I'm here till Sunday, so I'll be around all, all of scale. Um, and uh, thank you for coming today. <laughs>